Hi there, this is a lesson on gravitational field strength for A-level physics. So, from the previous lesson, we know that the gravitational force is equal to G mass 1, mass 2, divided by distance squared. We also know that at the surface, that the, the gravitational force that you would experience is equal to M times G. That force is otherwise known as weight. Now, I've called it F though because well, weight is the, is a force. But as you can see, we've got two two equations for F, and what we can do is make them equal to each other. So what we can write is mg is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. The masses cancel, and what we're left with is gravitational field strength is g m over r squared. So this is the equation that we'll be using today. Gravitational field strength. This is for a radial field. It's also a vector quantity. And it's got two units. We've got newtons per kilogram. And we've got meters per second squared. The acceleration due to gravity. Both the same thing. Let's have a look at an example. So we're going to do this question if you want to have a go using that equation. Just pause the video. And then we're going to calculate the gravitational field strength due to the Earth at these three different locations. The top of Snowden, top of Mount Everest, and the International Space Station. So I'm just going to work through these. So we're going to use the gravitational field strength as gm over r squared. Then just simply put the numbers in. So we've got 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass, which is 5.97, times 10 to the 24, divided by the distance from the centre of the Earth. So we've got 6.37 times 10 to the 6, plus the 1,000 metres. And then remember to square that. And that will give us 9.81 metres per second squared. You can put newtons per kilogram, that's fine as well. But that's the answer. Let's have a look at the next one. So the top of my Everest this time. So it's the same equation. G equals GM over R squared. Let's put the numbers in. So 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Multiplied by the mass of the Earth. 5.97 times 10 to the 24. Divided by radius squared. So that would be the 6.37 times 10 to the 6. This time we're going to add 10,000 and then remember to square that. And that will give you a gravitational field strength of 9.78 metres per second squared. And then one more. G equals GM over R squared. Put the numbers in. So 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Multiplied by the mass, 5.97 times 10 to the 24. Divided by radius, 6.37 times 10 to the 6. Plus, this time we've got 300 kilometers, so 300 times 10 to the 3. And make sure you square that quantity. And that gives a gravitational field strength of 8.95 meters per second squared. So you might not realize that, but there's still quite a significant gravitational effect at the International Space Station, which is obviously responsible for keeping it in orbit. So what I'm going to do this time is show you how you can calculate the, the gravitational field strength of a planet that has double the radius and double the density when compared to the Earth. So I'm going to show you this technique that you can use in future. So what we know is that gravitational field strength is gm over r squared. We also know that mass is density times volume. And we also know that the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. And what we can do is, is kind of shotgun these into each other. So we can pop that in there and then pop all of that into this equation. I'm just going to show that. So g is equal to gm over r squared, but m is density times volume. Density times volume 
volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and then remember to divide by r squared. The r squared cancels, and we're left with a very useful equation. g equals g rho, 4 thirds pi r. And then we can answer a question like this, as it's compared to the earth, we know what g is for the earth. We've got double the density and double the radius, so double the density and double the radius. 2 times 2 is 4, so we've got 4 times g. So the answer to this question is 4 times 9.81, surface gravity on Earth, which gives an answer of 39.24 metres per second squared. Hopefully that's okay. Let's move on. So if you want to have a go at this question, feel free to pause and then I'll take you through it. So the gravitational field strength from the surface of the moon is 1.7 newtons per kilogram. Assuming the moon is a uniform sphere of radius 1.7 times 10 to the 6 meters, calculate the mass of the moon and then calculate the gravitational field strength at double the radius. So to get the mass, we just need to use the equation g equals gm over r squared. We need to rearrange to find mass. So mass would be g r squared divided by the gravitational constant. So we've put our numbers in, so it's 1.7 times the radius squared, so that would be 1.7 times 10 to the 6 squared divided by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. These quantities are on your data sheet, but we've used them previously in the video. But anyway, that gives a mass of the moon of 7.4 times 10 to the power 22 kilograms. Then to get the gravitational field strength at double the radius, we know that gravitational field strength is gm over r squared. So we can see there that gravitational field strength is inversely proportional to the distance squared. So we can write that like this. G is proportional to 1 over r squared. And in the question, we double the radius. So if we double the radius, 2 squared is 4. So this number gets 4 times greater. Because they're in inverse proportion, this will get 4 times less. So we just need to do 1.7 newtons per kilogram. Divided by 4. Which gives an answer for the gravitational field strength for 0 0.43 newtons per kilogram. Hopefully that's okay. Right, let's move on to another question. So if you want to pause and attempt this, and then I'll take you through the answers. So the acceleration due to gravity at the Earth's surface is 9.81 metres per second squared. Calculate the acceleration due to gravity on a planet that has, so A, the same mass and three times the radius. So on this one, we need to do gravitational field strength is gm over r squared. So the same mass, three times the radius. Three squared is nine. So this is nine times greater, which means the gravitational field strength will be nine times less. So that would be 9.81 divided by 9, which is 1.09 meters per second squared. Okay, let's look at B. Hopefully that went okay. So B is the same radius and twice the density. So I'm going to show the equation where it comes from again that we looked at a moment ago. So G is equal to GM over R squared. And then we're going to sub in mass is density times volume, and volume is 4 thirds pi R cubed. So that gives us G equals G rho, 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by r squared. So 4 thirds pi r, the r cubed and the r squared cancel to leave r. So we can do B, to, uh, so same radius twice the density, so same radius twice the density, so that gives us 2G. And 2G is 2 times 9.81, which gives a gravitational field strength of 19.62 meters per second squared. And then we can do C while we're at it. So C is half the radius and three times the density. So if I can write this again, actually, G equals G rho, 
four thirds pi r. Half the radius, three times the density. So we've got three times the density, half the radius. Three times a half is 1.5. So we have 1.5 g. So 1.5 times g on Earth, which is 9.81, which gives the gravitational field strength for C of 14.7 meters per second squared. Hopefully you found that straightforward after the previous example. So let's move on. So this is a rather challenging question. If you want to pause and have a go at this, and then I'll take you through it and explain how it's done. Charon is a moon of Pluto that is so large, it is the largest known satellite relative to its parent's body. Pluto has eight times the mass of Charon. X is the point where the resultant gravitational field strength is zero. Show the distance to point X from the center of Pluto in terms of D is X equals 0.74 D. So we know that the gravitation at this point, the gravitational field strength due to Pluto and Charon is are equal to each other. So what we can do, we can start this. This is obviously Pluto because it's bigger, and this is Charon. So we can say that the gravitational field strength due to Pluto is equal to the gravitational field strength. Oops, sorry. Gravitational field strength due to the moon. So we just need to substitute in our equation. So we've got G, uh, the mass of Pluto, divided by the distance. Now the distance is this distance x from the center of Pluto. So divide by x squared equals. Now we've got G. Now we don't have the mass of Charon, but we do know that Charon is eight times smaller. So I'm going to write mass of Pluto. Divided by 8, because that would be Charon's mass. And then this distance here would be D, the full thing, minus X. So I need to write D minus X squared. Cancel the G's. Cancel the masses of Pluto. If you want to try and finish that from there, that's great. I'm just going to clear the screen and then go from this bottom point. In fact, let me just, if we flip both sides, because we've basically got no numbers on top. So if we flip both sides, we've got x squared equals eight d minus x squared. So let's clear the screen and start with that point. So the first thing that we need to do is, is get rid of these x, uh, sorry, the squares, because we don't want to deal with a quadratic. So what we can say is x is equal to square root of eight which I'll just leave as root 8, d minus x. So we need to multiply out, so it's root 8 times d, which is root 8d, minus root 8 times x. Then we just need to take the minus root 8x to the left-hand side, so we end up with x plus root 8x. And if you do 1 plus root 8 in your calculator, you end up with... 1 plus 2 times root 2, lots of x, equals root 8d. So x is simply root 8 divided by 1 plus 2 root 2 times d. So we just need to evaluate that in our calculator. The root 8 divided by 1 plus 2 root 2 which gives us x equals 0 0.74 times d, as required. Hopefully you found that video okay. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you soon.